Welcome to Believe in Chargers. Say uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you may be celebrating. Hope you are enjoying the holiday season. Uh, certainly low for the Chargers and their expectations this season. Uh, not very merry uh, this time of year. They have lost six of seven. They have the second worst record in the AFC. Only the Patriots with their four wins have fewer. Uh, the Titans have five as well. And, and now we are looking toward next year at least we thought we were but I'll say I think some inspired football uh, the way the team played for Giff Smith the effort they put forth uh, had a lead there in the final few minutes against Buffalo but uh, an all too familiar ending unfortunately as uh, they chalk it up to another loss and they weren't able to spoil the playoff hopes of the Bills but but again I'll reiterate as I, I hand it to you at least we saw some inspired play I mean we saw guys out there really fighting for one another and and for this coaching staff yeah, Matt, and isn't that amazing how you see a team once you fire your coach and for whatever reason, how guys either elevate, they either ascend or descend. Look at the Raiders, for instance. We talked about what the young man's doing there as a linebacker played against with the Giants Pierce, yeah. but look how now the guys are fighting. They're in every single game. If they had, if you have a Justin Herbert or a Mahomes or if they had a quarterback with that team, the way that they're playing, they're a playoff type of caliber team. They're playing that good of football. They're not making mistakes, even though their quarterback is inadequate and is not the, the guy. He's a, you know, a, you know, a, a stopgap quarterback. They're competing. You look at now, you flip, and you look at the Chargers. I'd rather have the Chargers roster than the Raiders roster. But yeah. look at sometimes, you look at the difference in, in the comparison, and it's like, wow, why are those men – in that staff, why are they competing, even though they may be losing or falling short? But why do they look like they're playing better, efficient, and collectively better? And that's the thing sometimes baffle me. And that's when you and I talked about several weeks ago, the inability for Staley to get those guys to at least resonate or to play to what they're capable of. And that's the thing that was frustrating to the fans and frustrating to you. And, and it had to be frustrating to Coach Staley because he knows X's and O's. And why weren't those men playing for him the way that now you see the way that they played against Buffalo inspired, played with tenacity. They ran around. They were hitting guys. They looked like a team, even though they had some silly mistakes, things lining up offsides, you know, yeah. receivers not getting on the ball. Those little things that can be wrecked, those are self-inflicted wounds that can be corrected. Yeah, though, I think there's a lot of takeaways there. You know, the one that's the most obvious to me is, or I think to most people, would be the scoring. You know, is the fact that, that Cameron Dicker made five field goals in a game. That's the first time a Chargers kicker has made five or more field goals in a game in a decade. And you go back to the Broncos game, the only seven points they give up pretty much in the first half are on an interception that Herbert threw inside his own five-yard line. So you keep going for for, you know, this fourth down conversion, and you never take a lead. You never put points on the board. The Chargers had not led a game since they beat the Patriots 6-0. to zero. They did not lead in the Raider game. They did not lead in the Bronco game. So I think for Giff, put points on the board. Take a lead. Right. You know, right. jump out. They were up 10 nothing in that game. Like, right. I do think there's something to that for a defense to say, hey, we're out here playing with a lead. And they forced, right. you know, three punts on the first three possessions that the Bills come out with. And I think that goes a long way for that side of the football to be like, okay, our, our coach is taking care of us here. We got ourselves a lead. Let's pin our ears back and, and get after it a little bit here. And they created two turnovers. And with that being said, what do you, when you look at money, you think about what analytics and all those different things say. And because Staley is a new school type of coach, do you think that when you look at analytics in that spot and you say, man, Coaches have to go back to old school, and that's maybe one of the things that they have to revert from. It's more of a feel and more of a judgment call instead of just saying, hey, the analytics says this because it sounds good, but you see how many times those things don't work. And yeah. that's why sometimes when you look at analytics and you try to equate that to success on the football field, I think it's a very, very – I think you're, 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 you're flirting with a, a, a situation where you can lose your job, where you lose not just your job – but the biggest thing is you lose the guys that are on the team, like you just alluded to, from playing from in front or playing from behind. I can play more loose when I'm in front. I can pin my ears back. The things that you talked about, those are the things that the analytics, I don't know if it comes, it takes into account for success. Well, I think, you know, and, and Coach had said this, Staley had said this, but I just don't feel like he necessarily followed, I don't want to say his own advice, but sort of what he was preaching. And that's your opponent dictates 
You know, if you're playing the Chiefs with Tyree Kill and and Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, you got to score touchdowns. You know, you're playing right. the Dolphins, you got to score touchdowns. You're playing the Lions, you got to score touchdowns. When you're playing the Broncos, who have struggled, when you're playing the Bills, that you got three and outs, these first three possessions, go kick the field goals. And, and that's right. what, what Giff was doing. I think the second thing, sorry, my dog just scared the heck out of me. The no, second thing that uh, I love it. The, the second thing that that jumps out at me. And, you know, I'll, I'll credit Daniel Popper, who, who does who covers the beat for the athletic on the Chargers. The, the tone that he had of the article was negative, And I would completely push back on that. I thought it was a positive. They just because Derwin can play all these positions because he can play high and play a free safety. He can play slot defender. It doesn't mean he should. It doesn't mean that that's what best serves the team and best serves Derwin. And I think what it's something that we've talked about on here multiple times, get Derwin close to the ball, get him on the line of scrimmage, play him at some linebacker even. You know, we've talked about how the the Cowboys use Bell and like that's something that can go a long way. And that's what Giff did. And I think you saw that. You saw Derwin impact in the game. He was just a a hair away of creating a huge play. I mean, he swiped at that ball as Josh Allen let it go for an incomplete pass on third down that forced a punt. But, like, yeah, he played the fewest amount of snaps in a game than he has, that he has since he was drafted by the Chargers, 75% without being removed from the game or injured in a game. But I think that speaks to how this coaching staff, how a defensive coaching staff, you know, specifically Giff, who works with the defensive line and with the edge rushers, sees him like, hey, that, let's maximize your snaps, man. Right, let's not right. have you out there for 100% of the snaps if right. 25% of them aren't what you're best at. That, wow. And Matt, that's that's what so many coaches, they fail to realize. They put these co- these players in tough situations because they think, oh, my God, we got to have him on the field. Hey, look, have a guy go spill that guy for two plays or three yeah. plays. Okay, take him out on you know that, hey, look, he might be a little slower on this play. Put a speedy guy in there and say, look, Use your speed. We want you to run with him. So put guys in that position for the success. And that's what part. That's what Bill Belichick, that's what Bill Parcells, those are some of those things those guys did great as coaches. They said, look, for my system, I just need you to do this. If you stay in that box, you're going to have success. Instead of saying, I want you to be Pandora's box and try to do everything and be to everyone. And sometimes that doesn't fare well for the, for the player. So I totally yeah. agree with you. And I love the way these coaches, they started to use guys – in situations where they can play with more vigor where the plays that they're out there. Yeah, I think, you know, Derwin was humiliated the week before. I mean, Staley's got him in the slot opposite Trey Tucker, who's a 4-3 guy, and he gets burned for a 50-yard touchdown, and it's like, yeah, you know, that that's, that's, Derwin doesn't deserve that. I, I know he can play some slot D, but when you're opposite with no safety help on a guy that's that fast, come on, <laughs> you know, it's like it's just not fair to him. And so – you know, there were some big critical third downs, that final drive where they drove into field goal range. You know, he wasn't out there for a handful of those plays. And that's sort of what Popper was leaning on. Like, hey, this is maybe a little bit disconcerting that Derwin's not out on the most important play of the drive. But they had it. I mean, they had it. They, they ran the zero. You know, Derek Ansley called the zero at the perfect time. Allen's throwing off his back foot. And unfortunately, you got Asante and Hawkins that just bonk right into each yep. other instead of switching. And you get Khalil Shakir, who ends up, you know, catching a pass that probably should have been picked off and returned for six the other way if there's better communication. And and I think the one thing I do want to go back to instead of saying, hey, this was so much better just defensively is sort of what we've seen all season, right? Is when you have that here, the offense gave you the lead and all you have to do is get off the field. Can you get me one more stop? And they couldn't. And, right. and that's unfortunately what reared its ugly head again. And, and you know what, Matt, you're, you're, to your point, you're absolutely right. Bad teams find a way to, win, to lose right. and good teams find a way to win. But here's what you have to realize. This is what you were alluding to. If there's only maybe a handful of quarterbacks that make that play, you're right. absolutely right. Josh Allen, he's probably, I'll say, I don't think there's five other quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, I think he's just as fast as probably, I think he, I would think he's faster than Mahomes. Oh yeah. So when you, talk, when you look at, this quarterback, that guy for that moment, there's not five guys in the NFL right. quarterbacks that are faster, that are stronger, and as mobile as Josh Allen. So that was a perfect, like you said, that was a perfect play. That was a yeah. perfect storm. And you just had a guy 
athletic ability made a play because right. any other lot of quarterbacks, 95% of the quarterbacks in the National League, they're not getting that ball off. That ball's intercepted. He, he doesn't have the arm strength to get it there. You're absolutely right. That's they played point. well enough to win that ball game. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, it's a great point. It was Josh Allen. Was, it was Josh yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's and, that, like, come on, man. That's that. Yeah. That you're like, man. He just and did. Josh Allen. Josh Allen him. You know, a handful right. of times. You know, right. and that's what got away from. But you know, and, and and then I think when we flipped to the offensive side of the ball, I was so happy for Easton Stick to to put. Yeah. He played great. He had a great yeah. game. Talking about nine different receivers. Um, he ended up rushing for a touchdown there. Look, I think you go back to the game against the Raiders, right? And you watch the second half. We talked about this. And there's some really good things that he was doing in that second half. You had to clean up the turnovers, right? Pick six, two lost balls, you know, on strip sacks that one gets returned for a touchdown. So let's clean up the turnovers. What's he doing this game? Zero turnovers. Now, the one thing that now let's see him take that next step in his third start, let's avoid the sacks. Let's get rid of that ball because you're holding on to it a little bit too long. You kind of got to recognize Again, that that nickel, you know, that slot blitz, that slot defender that's blitzing, the nickel blitz, the, the safety that's coming in on a delayed blitz, like they still not quite recognizing that and you're locking in and you don't see that coming. So let's take that step. And then the other thing that really jumped out to me low in that game is when they're running the mesh, man, he keeps that ball and he's got another 60, 70 yards rushing. The end is crashing repeatedly. And for whatever reason, he just kept giving it Given it, given it, it's like, oh, he's going to go back, watch the film, and that's the next step. And he can run. That's the he thing. Can when run, you watch man. The, dude, when you watch him take off and to see when he's, when he's, when he says, okay, when he's made his mind to run or to take off and he has some space, the kid's pretty tough. Absolutely. He can run. Yeah, he can. he can run. I mean, and we said this. You're talking about someone at North Dakota that rushed for 2,500 yards and 41 touchdowns, you know, and, and, I, and I'll tell you, this is the other thing. Um, offensively that jumps out at you is Kellen, who's been in battle this year, certainly. But, you know, Eckler ends up running for over four yards per carry in this game. Some great runs. And again, he could have had a lot more rushing yards if you keep on those me- on those options instead of handing. But the play that he dialed up at the end, and you know it well, though, it was the Music City Miracle. Yeah. And <laughs> he dialed it up, and it was perfect. And this... This is what is maddening. This is just attention to detail. He's got seven guys. The He's line. got a lane. Oh. All they had to do, all they had to do was block the first defender and then make their wall. And you've got four offensive linemen. And Zion, for whatever reason, just kind of shoves the first guy and is taken off downfield. And uh, Brennan Hymas can't engage and the first guy gets through, and Erickson has to, to turn it back inside. And it's like, get the first guy before you work your way downfield. Make sure you block the first person. And that's the one thing they didn't do. I, I thought, Matt, I didn't care. I thought Erickson was just going to stay to the sideline. I yeah. just trust his speed and not cut back. If he just trusts his speed and, like you said, and go, yeah, Zion should have stayed on. But I saw the wall. I heard yeah. he, he's got something. It was. I was like, "This is going to be a great call." Maddie's getting ready to have his call. That's going to go so, down. Infamous. It was set up perfectly. It was set up perfectly low, and it's funny because in the moment when we're calling the game, that's exactly what we said. We were like, "Oh no, Erickson, what are you doing? Why did you bend that back toward the middle? Just take the sideline." Yeah. And then when you go back and watch the tape, okay. you realize. You had, had four this. guys to block yeah. one player and you let him through and he was just standing right there okay. waiting for him. So Erickson had to bend it back and it's like, okay, oh, you've got four guys, yes, yes. four guys to block one. <laughs> but I think the takeaway there is what a great call by Kellen. It was. And he's got these great plays that he's come up with. You know, you think about the Keenan Allen catch across the middle and the lateral to Eckler on a third and 17 that goes for 20. I want to see more of those. Let's have some right. fun. Let's get out right. there. Let's have some fun in these games. And you got, again, nine different guys catch a football. Everybody's getting involved. You only had Eckler run. You know, it was two carries for Isaiah, one for Joshua Kelly. You know, and unfortunately, even the reverse, right, to, to right. on the spot on the sweep, or it wasn't a reverse, but the sweep to Q sweep. would have been a yeah. great play. And he's lined up. Right, so those details, these guys got to be better about paying attention to the details.
Yeah, no question. I think that comes with time and that comes with, but that's what coaches have to continue to stay on. And those are those small things that got to, you got to hold guys accountable. You have to go through these in the walkthrough. Okay, guys, line up, make sure everyone's on, who's off, who's on. And you call guys out in meetings. I had some coaches that did that. That was more like, why are we doing this again? But it becomes repetition because you see guys that go out there they and it's just automatic. I point out the official and I'm not really watching. I just do that point because it just becomes a part of the ritual instead of saying, right. okay, he's telling me step up. Okay, am I off? When I wave back, then that means I'm going to be off the line. He automatically saying you're off the ball. So he's got to call you off. And the officials have a job to do so. I think that has the emphasis around the league, and especially with teams that are that are close. Because this Charger team, this record is not who they are. But your record, that you know, they say it is. Yeah. But this team is better than what you. Yeah, no doubt, Lo. I think, I think when you talk about you know moving forward, you know we we had mentioned these last three games. Yes, top five pick would be great. If you can get someone, this this is a team that needs an infusion of young talent. There's too many and veteran contracts go? on this team. Where would you but, go, Matt, if it's top five? What would you well, start? I, I, I want to trade back. I want to trade back and just get a ransom because you've got, you know, you've got Daniels, you've got May, and you've got Williams, three quarterbacks. And if the if the Cardinals are going to stick and pick because they want Marvin Harrison, Junior. So you've got these four elite, elite and even with Fashan, Fashanu, the, the tackle from Penn State, you maybe have five elite players. So if you're there, you can trade back and just get a one next year, get an extra two, get a three, get back. Like that's ultimately, if, but more importantly, I do think you need to win. If you, you know, you almost wrecked the Bills postseason hopes, you know, you were this close to wrecking that. Let's make sure the Broncos don't have a winning season. After losing to the three win Patriots last week, get into Denver lose to the five win chargers and now you're guaranteed a losing season with your ninth loss and then come back and let's see Patrick Mahomes scream and yell on the sideline again and act like a petulant child because he's not happy you know let's do that again let's let's make them the four seed you know and and have to play the bills or the dolphins in the first round like that's that to me is still there for them and and I'd like to see Giff get a win on his record. I'd like to so see Easton Stick get a win. I thought Giff, you know, he's such a great guy and, and someone who's been around as, as long as he has. Tell me a little know. about Giff. Tell me about him. I mean, because so the way he uh, handled stuff on the court sideline, I thought he showed some, you know, that 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 aura. He had that aura, that presence. See, yeah. I've seen the guy's respect. He's got a respect. I see the presence that he has on that side. So I thought I was I was kind of impressed with that. Yeah, GIF is GIF's, uh, you know, Georgia Southern defensive lineman, Hall of Famer, you know, and a, a divi- an NCAA, you know, one double A champion two times over. A tough guy. And, and, you know, I don't know the exact details, but, you know, he was the D line coach and Bosa, you know, would basically cite him as his favorite coach. And when Brandon Staley came in, made Jay Rogers the D line coach. So to some degree, GIF got demoted. And a lot of people thought the only reason he was able to stick around is because Bosa insisted that he stick around. So I think you're probably talking about a little bit of of this between he and and Staley, perhaps. But the players respect the heck out of him. No question. Um, yeah, he's a football guy. You know, you can. It's guy who's coached at Alabama, who's coached at Tennessee, who's coached, you know, throughout the SEC. He's um, and you know, same with Da with Derek Ansley. You're talking about someone that's one of the better secondary coaches in all of football, you know, did it uh, very similar. You know, he was, um, Ansley was, I'm sorry, GIF was at Arkansas in the SEC, not uh, not at Alabama. Alabama. It was DA who was at Alabama and Tennessee and, you know, helped the, the Raiders out on their secondary. So I think you have, you know, sort of coaches that can coach, but, you know, Brandon Staley was very adamant. My scheme, my calls, my, 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 and, and you know, I think maybe it overshadowed them. A little bit and now it feels like gif is more of that ceo kellen you do you you know and and we got we got one of the spe- you know ryan ficken you might be the best special teams coach in the league this year let's let's lean on your guys on jk scott and cameron dicker and let's get them into the pro bowl and let's go kick some field goals and and it's a national platform for for cameron dicker who's who's been the best kicker in the nfl and absolutely should be an all pro and should be in the pro bowl and, you know, let's get him out there and let's feature him. And I think the players, you know, really respond to that. And the first thing that Giff said, and I think this speaks to something that we talked about, how, how you know, unfortunate and upsetting it was that Easton Stick had that stuck to him, that 63 to 21 loss, is the first thing he said is, you know, Easton proved he's an NFL quarterback. Now, Easton Stick through these two starts has shown that he is an NFL quarterback. And that's him 
you know, pushing out, hey, let's get this guy paid. Let's make sure this guy gets himself a nice, you know, could be a bridge quarterback for one of these teams that's drafting a rookie. Hopefully he wants to stick around in, in L.A. And, and stay in that room with Herbert. But I think Easton is showing, you know, you need 32 quarterbacks out there. And I'm certainly see some, I see some on Sundays that I'm like, I'd much rather have free. I would much rather have Easton stick out there. Yeah. And then the one thing I also think it, it says low, it just to take another, I don't mean to take the shots, but it's just the way it, it works out. Chase Daniel had no business being on this roster. You know, Joe Lombardi, if you can't be an offensive coordinator and call the plays for yourself because you need, you need that coach in the quarterback room or the coach on the field, then why are you getting paid to be an offensive coordinator? Get that guy out of here. He had sure. no business being the number two over East in the last two years. You know, right. Easton should have got those reps. He should have had that on his resume instead of being a three who's inactive on game day. So I'm very happy that he's able to show, oh, I can play quarterback in this league. And, and you know, it'll help him. He's five years in now. Get another five, seven, eight years, whatever, being a backup or get your crack at being a starter in this league. Oh, no question. And like you said, you said that you see 30 teams need 32 quarterbacks yeah. in this league. I think they need more like 64 because you've yeah. seen how many times you've yeah. seen him that, that the number one it gets injured or hurt or just going to sit him down. You that as as the Steelers, how that worked out going with the guy who's been a retread in this league. And now you see that, you know, uh, uh, freaking Rudolph goes to the third string quarterback, unseats the number two, because you do need more than yeah. 32 quarterbacks. You need hikes, like I said, 64, because you never know when that one's going down or when that one is going to struggle. You better know what you have in that number two guy. No doubt. I think you look at the deal that Jarrett Stidham got in Denver this offseason to back up Russell Wilson. And that's probably what Easton's looking at. You know, can I get myself one of those four or five million dollar a year deals to to be known as, hey, if your guy goes down for a week or two or whatever you might need, I'm here to make sure your playoff hopes don't go down the drain. And and I think that's something the Chargers ought to I mean it's hard because you've got Justin so Herbert yes, who's yes. making fifty, you know, forty yeah. to uh, now his number doesn't jump as much next year, but it jumps considerably. It's hard to put more money into the quarterback room when you have that much money in there already. But I think it's something that's that's worth thinking about when you have Super Bowl, you know, aspiration. I mean, think about a lot of people are excited about the possibility of Jim Harbaugh, you know, coming in and and what did Jim Harbaugh have? He had, you know, Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick. You know, yep. making sure, let's make sure that room is solid in case we need that second quarterback to, to carry us through because we expect to make a Super Bowl. So I hope that works out for, for Easton and that he continues to build and he can get at least a win, and if not to, because, again, talking about wrecking seasons. The Broncos were beside themselves that they lost at home to a three-win New England Patriots team, all but ending. Now, they're still alive, but barely, but if you can end it, and make sure and, they have a losing season. Do it. I don't care about the draft pick as much as you know. That you got to get you got to get your picks to hit in the second, third, and fourth round. That's what no you got to start doing. You know, let's get let's get more Tulis, more Darius Davises. Let's get more of those players that Jamari Sawyer's that that can help. You know, this team, Aloe Gilman, Drew Tranquils. Like I think about all of those players that that you need in order to populate this roster when you're carrying a quarterback that's going to be making forty to fifty million bucks a year. I couldn't agree with you more, and I think the Chargers are going to head in that direction. It's going to be interesting. I hope Hardball's that guy. I hope he wins a national title really bad this year. I'm pulling for him because if he does, I just think, what is it else for him to prove? Now, the only thing for him to prove would be to win a Super Bowl and no take an NFL team because now he's had one on both levels, and that Super Bowl we know eluded him with the Niners. So you let him win a national title, I'm pulling for you, Harbs. I know you are too, Maddie, because mm – -hmm. I'm telling you, you, bring him to L.A. with the Chargers, with the quarterback that he has, and just how he is, he will turn that system and turn that program, no no question around. Yeah, no doubt. And I think as we, you know, kind of put a bow on it here, I, I would, if there is one thing I'd like to see, I mean, we already kind of talked about what we wanted to see, right? We wanted to see more running with that Easton stick. Let's get more of that, those RPOs going. And we got that. And I think we'll get that to the next level here as he looks back at the film and sees all those opportunities that were there against Denver. Uh, we talked about, you know, a little bit more for Isaiah Spiller, but you know what? I'm okay with that because all Austin Eckler needs now is 80 yards in each of these games. He needs 160 to get his million dollars in incentives. And I certainly want to see him reach that number. 
Uh, he's earned it. All the stuff that he's done, the sacrifices he, he's made with his body. So I want to see him get that extra million bucks for 1,125 yards that, that he's like 160 away from right now. But wow. the one thing I really want to see, I really want to see Dayon Henley out there. We still aren't seeing it. And I just, I feel like the, the only thing I can think of, Lo, and, and it's stuff that we're not privy to, but Maybe Kenneth Murray and Eric Kendricks are just really good practice players. Maybe they bust their tails in every drill and they set a tone yep. and they're good leaders and that's why they're being rewarded with playing time. But I just feel like their current situations make it line up where I don't think – both. I know for a fact both of them aren't going to be back next year. No. And no. I don't know if even one of them is going to be back. So let's get Dan out there. Let's get a little bit more of that – Derwin Day on linebacker, super athletic at that level, and, and see what that looks like. I'd love to get a look at that these next two weeks. Yeah, and you just got to let him play. Yeah, I don't care how many mistakes he makes. Just want to see him run around and hit guys. I'm with you. I think you need to do that because you know the salary cap or whatever is going to hold the two other guys from not being, especially how they're so much over the cap. So it's going to be interesting. You got to let them play, let him play, let him get his reps, whether he looks good or not, just to see if he has that football IQ see if it can transfer onto a game. Matt, I know we're getting ready to wrap up. I got to ask two questions. Yeah. One is not who's the best team in AFC, but who's the hottest team in your mind in the AFC, maybe the best or the hottest team in AFC, and also the NFC. Give me two sleepers right now. Well, you know, look, I, I thought it was the Bills in, until we saw what the Chargers were able to do with them. And, and I think they, the, the Bills just have turnover issues. They've had them all year long. And, and I think when you start playing against a defense – you know, like what the Ravens have with Matt BK and Patrick Queen and every Kyle Hamilton and just all the athletes they have. I think that poses a serious risk for them come the postseason. It does feel like the Ravens have pulled away in the AFC. You know, the Dolphins continue to have their issues. I think every other team has got flaws that that will raise their hands come the come the postseason. You know, the the AFC South has certainly come crashing back to earth. Right. You know, um, so to me, I, I feel like it's it's I mean, you're talking about those those four teams at the top, right? The Ravens, yeah. the Bills, the Dolphins, the Chiefs. If I had to pick one, it feels like the Ravens just because they're more of the complete team, um, you know, are, are have pulled away. Right. I don't I don't worry about the 49ers. No. I just don't. I just I, I to don't. me, they're still so I, I take them over the Eagles and the you know, the, the, I will say this, the one team in the NFC that's the most interesting to me just because of the play caller is Sean McVay and the Rams. Okay. Uh, to me, I was, that's that's what I wanted to hear. That, okay. That's I, I'm with you. I think the Rams right now, I'm not saying they're the best, but far as the hot and just being yeah, consistent because you have McVay and you have the same type of offense that the 49ers run that same coaching tree. You think about it, you look at the way that they're playing and their quarterback. I'll tell you right now, I know Purdy, you know, had a bad day because of the fact MVP talk and he just, the stage got too big. I'm not worried about them, but you can't tell me that Purdy's better than the quarterback that they have. No, not better than Stafford. Not, yeah, it's just, it's not. He's not, but look at the way the Stafford's playing, but look at the way that the Rams are running the ball. Matt, look, they are, they are a carbon copy of what the Niners are and their two receivers. They're just, they're running, getting over hundred yards. They're playing physical. I like the Rams, too. I think that that's one of the hottest teams as well in yeah. NFC. I'm not saying the and best. I, yeah. And also, you know, look, they have secondary issues, but their front is solid, uh, and certainly their offense is explosive. Don't sleep on the Lions. You know, I know it's yeah. their first time winning the division in 30, right. 40 years, whatever it's been, but right. that's an explosive offense. That's, that's a you know, that is a gnarly offense. Two legitimate running backs. Amon Ross St. Brown is a physical load that you've got to concern yourself with. You know, golf is, you can keep the pocket clean. Golf will carve you up. He'll hurt you. you. He'll hurt you. He will carve you up in the middle of the field. Sam Laporte has, you know, been exceptional as a rookie this season. So that's, that's one to, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun postseason. No doubt. That's my Christmas switch. I want to see the Rams and Detroit Lions get it on. Yeah, Who absolutely. No. In Detroit. <laughs> Detroit. Well, let's see. Yeah, uh, let's see the Chargers ruin the Broncos and the Chiefs yes. season. We'll be back next week, uh, hopefully after a win for Easton Stick over the Broncos in Denver at Mile High. Uh, we certainly appreciate all you being here with us. We're thankful for all of you. Hope you have a wonderful holiday and incredible New Year's. And we'll be back in 2024 on Believe in Chargers. Matt, you're the best. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.